So welcome to Techno Dad Life. And so today we're doing a follow-up video to our last video, which was about setting up Portainer for success. And so today what we're gonna do is show you how to set up Dockers using the Container tab, which is what most beginners use, and then also how to use Stacks, which actually I find is much easier. So let's do it. If you found this video helpful, make sure you check out the links in the description below where you can support this channel. So let's go to Portainer and show you the difference between the Containers tab and the Stacks tab and what you can do with both of those. So on our dashboard, if we go to Containers first, we can see that all our containers that we've already installed are listed here. But the one thing we can do is over on the top right here, it says add container. We can add, we can add containers through this menu. So if we click on add container, it comes up a page that I feel is probably the worst designed interface that I've ever come across in my life, uh, especially how the, the page flows. It just doesn't make any sense at all. But so how you would use this is you f find a container. And so here, we have the grocery container by Linux server IO. And so its name is Linux server grocery. So we start here, we type in grocery and then we copy the name and paste it in here. And so what you put in this spot here is the image that Portainer will download. And you can see right below that it says always pull the image. And so what that means is when you start this container, it will try to download this image. Now on this line, it also has a search option. So say you only know the name of the program, which is grocery, then you just click search and it take you, takes you to Docker Hub and lists the, all the different versions of that. And again, we can go right back to it. Now if we go down, so we don't need to worry about web hooks because they're for the paid edition. Now you'll see here it says network port configuration, publish all port network ports to random host ports. We do not want to do that because that would be very confusing for us. So we're going to click on publish new port network port. Now if we go back to grocery, we scroll down to the second one where it says command line. It says P for port and so the external port is 9283 going to the internal port of 80. So the external port 9283 going to 80 inside. And then you come down here and it says deploy container, uh, except for we still have things to change and those for some reason are below the deploy container. Like I said, the worst design UI I have ever seen. So if we look over to the right now, so we don't have any commands. So basically you can look at the first letter and figure out what's going on. So we have environmental variables. Those are the ports, which we already did. Volumes, and then restart always is the restart policy. So we don't have any commands. We go to volumes and we have to go down here. Again, the UI adjusts so it makes it harder to see. Click on map additional volumes. And so the volume in the container is this slash config. So we put that right there. And then if we just leave things as they are, it just gives us two options, neither of which we want. And so what we have to do is actually click bind. And now we can put in our path on our host. And so for that, we want to go back to shared folders, copy, copy our absolute path, paste that in there, but we're not done. So if we go on our shared folder, we can see there is our data folder, which we've gotten to here. And then if we click further, we have another folder inside called Docker. And then we go by the name of whatever program it is. So at the end of this, we need to put slash Docker and then slash grocery. Then I always hit additional path, even though there's not one just to make sure it, it sticks, but there's probably no reason for that. Network is in bridge mode. So there's no network defined, so that means it will be bridge mode. Environmental variables. So we have three here. So our PUID, our GID, and our time zone. So we go add an environmental variable. So PUID, and so for us, 
If you remember from the video yesterday, how we find our PUID and GUID is go to command line and type ID and then the user. And then last time you remember, we put that UID and GID here so we would remember them. So for me, it's 1,100. So UID one was 1,000. Add another variable, PIG 100. And then our time zone. And again, we showed you how to look that up last time. For me, it's America slash New York. And then as we go across here, we don't see any labels. Uh, restart policy, that's right here. Restart and less stop. So we'll click on that. There's no runtime resources. So basically, those are things like privilege mode, enabling GPU, and limiting memory. And capabilities are check marks for different things that could come up. So we should be all done. So let's just go up to the top again. And got everything filled, the name. Oh, and I actually have the wrong name here. So it's not that. The name is actually this image name. It's right there. So basically, this will take the Linux server version of Groshi in the latest version. If we go over to the right again, just an example of that. So this image will work on these three architectures. You can specify what kind of architecture you want, but if you just put latest, it will retrieve the correct image for your arch or for your system. So we're just going to leave that at latest. So now I think everything's ready and then we'll click deploy container. So that's downloading the image and then starting up the application or Docker. So grocery is running. So let's check the logs. And it looks like it successfully started. So let's go over to here, click start. And so grocery started up and let's see what the password is. I'm just going to guess here. So admin, admin, and so now we're into the grocery. So what we're going to do next is actually delete that. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to do the same thing with the stacks. So we're going to use the same container. And so this time we're going to use this top version. And last time we used the bottom version because it was easier to figure out what was going on for the container. So we'll click on stacks, add a stack. Again, we need to name it. Copy that on that side. Paste that on this side. Change our PUID and our GID and our time zone. Change our pathway. And then scroll down, and we don't need any of the advanced values or anything like that, and click Deploy Stack. And then the stack is successfully deployed. To actually go to it, you go to Containers. And there it is again. Scroll over. And again, we can type in Admin and Admin. And we're back into Groshi. So you can see stacks are much faster because pretty much you're just copying, pasting everything and everything is very easy to understand what's going on. Uh, the other thing with stacks is you can actually have, so say you have like two containers that need to work together or you want to uh, deploy them on another server, you can just make one big stack with those two programs in it, or even more than that. So that was our basic introduction to stacks, and I hope you found that helpful. Uh, so this is the start of a journey if you're interested in Docker. So uh, stacks will eventually lead into Docker Compose, which we'll do a video into about a future, which is all basically the YAML files, which is another term that is for the future. But anyways, have a great day. And bye-bye.